Here, an inspector comes to make sure he has stayed within the rules. Feed is an especially important factor in sustainability. The main ingredient is grain, but organic shrimp can't get by without some fish meal in their diet. It makes up about 30% of the feed. But organic fish meal is made purely of fish waste. For example, leftovers from fillet production. Not a single extra wild fish has to die for this feed. Organic farms like this are less productive. Barrigan's farm produces 600 kilos of shrimp per hectare of pond, about half of what a conventional farm produces. The prices paid for organic produce are higher, but not high enough to make up the difference in profit. Organic uh, principles and concepts is more expensive, is, but I never look after that. I love this, I, I feel this is good, and that is the most rewarding thing for me. Ecological, sustainable aquaculture like this really can take some of the burden off the oceans. But it can't satisfy the world's appetite for fish. Biologists and ecologists are agreed that the oceans still contain enough fish to give humankind what it wants and needs. But we must start being more careful with this valuable marine resource. Examples to be found all over the world of how a moderate approach can pay off. One example is the cod stocks in the eastern Baltic Sea. Biologists from the Institute for Baltic Sea Fisheries have been monitoring them for years. Back in 2005, cod stocks were at a low ebb. The quotas were set much too high, much higher than scientists recommended. And then about 35 to 45 percent more cod was fished than legally permitted. Polish fisheries were largely responsible, and the Polish government turned a blind eye. That didn't change until the government changed in Poland. From 2007 onwards, the EU-friendly Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk saw to it that the quotas were respected. Since then, the cod stocks have recovered. They reached their historical low point in 2005 at about 60,000 tonnes. Now, just six years later, researchers estimate them at over 400,000 tonnes, more than six times as much. Christopher Zimmerman and his colleagues closely monitor the Baltic cod stocks. It's vital not to miss this opportunity to let them recover. Of course, there's always a danger that if the stocks recover quickly, the fisheries lobby will be quick to demand higher quotas. And that is very much the case here. Luckily for the cod stocks, we were able to implement a management plan in 2007, and this management plan contains what we call a stability clause. That means quotas may not be raised as quickly as the stocks recover, that they can only increase by 15 percent over the previous year's quota. That ensures that quotas only rise moderately and that stocks have a real chance to recover. And we can see the results. The stocks are doing well. So, sometimes sensible quota policies are enough to ensure that fisheries are sustainable. But for all the world's oceans to recover, radical reforms must be implemented in fisheries management. 
The cod trawler, Kristen Bettina, is leading the way. The fishermen on board are under constant supervision. Four cameras monitor what happens to the fish from the moment it is caught to the moment it enters the cool room. The goal is to somehow get the bycatch problem under control. We fishermen or captains are accused of doing illegal things all the time. So we said, let's install some cameras and subject ourselves to round-the-clock monitoring. And then nobody can accuse us of catching or throwing away small fish or the like. We replace the hard drive every four weeks and make the old one available to the authorities for inspection. The data are analysed at the Institute for Baltic Sea Fisheries in Rostock, where Germany's pilot study on supervised fisheries is based. Christopher Zimmermann is in charge of the programme. The video system covers every catch from start to finish. It also records the exact location and speed of the fishing vessel. That makes it possible to establish precisely where and when the catch was made. The cameras record what the fishermen haul in and the bycatch that they throw back overboard. In return, fishermen could look forward to fewer rules and regulations, to being able to fish freely but responsibly. The overall goal is to reduce bycatch to a minimum. Bycatch is one of the most essential problems in EU waters, largely because it's not covered by quotas. In other words, it's up to the fisherman how much he throws back overboard. We have to get away from this. We have to regulate the total amount of fish caught. We have to regulate how much of the stocks are fished, regardless of whether the fish ends up on our plates or goes back into the sea. Zimmermann says throwing away bycatch should be the same as throwing away money, an incentive to fishermen to keep their bycatch to a minimum. It can only work if we reverse the burden of proof. We can't leave it to the courts to find a fisherman guilty of breaking the law. We have to make the fishermen prove that they're acting within the law, that they're harvesting resources that belong to all of us in a responsible fashion. But this proposal is controversial. Opponents argue that it infringes on the fishermen's rights. The fisheries lobby likes to compare the proposal with cashiers who are filmed at work. But the difference is that the cashiers are not minding common property. In this case, the fish belongs to all of us, and fishermen are exploiting it free of charge. We allow fishermen to exploit this resource, but it's still our resource. If we carry that argument over to the cashier, it would be like being allowed to take everything out of the shop without paying for it, and all the cameras would do is document the missing stock for the accounting department, and nobody would be punished. The crew of the Kristen Bettina keeps its bycatch to a minimum. The meshes are bigger than required by law and the nets are equipped with what are known as barcoma exit windows. The barcoma mesh is square shaped and remains open even when the net is full. That means a smaller cod or other type of fish has a chance to get out. There are many ways for a fisherman to restrict his catch to the kind of fish that he can actually sell. But at the moment, it just doesn't pay. It might even cost more money. The way fisheries are currently regulated is diametrically opposed to sustainability. The only way to make fisheries sustainable is radical change. Boris Wurm and his colleagues have shown that several different measures have to be adopted at the same time more selective fishing techniques, smaller fleets, seasonal protection and protection zones. If the oceans are to avoid depletion, fishing pressure has to be reduced. Fishing pressure is defined as the amount of fish killed measured against the amount of fish in the sea. That doesn't mean there has to be less to go around. 
To understand the effects of fisheries, we have to explain the connections between the amounts caught, fishing pressure, and the effects on ecosystems. You can look at it like this. Fishing pressure can range from 0 to 100 percent. At the moment, fishing pressure is growing. Catches grow at first, then reach their ideal point, but then fall again because the fish stocks collapse. At the same time, the ecosystem loses biomass, and the average size of the fish shrinks. In other words, there are fewer fish, they are smaller, and the most important aspect in terms of conservation is that the number of collapsing fish stocks is increasing rapidly. That's where we are today. In other words, we are overfishing the oceans. We fall short of the ideal level and a large amount of fish stocks have already collapsed. Our proposal is to try to maintain the size of the catch while cutting the fishing pressure by half to the point where we can still harvest the same amount, but the collateral damage to the environment is much less significant. Most regions are here in this area at the moment. This is where we are, this is where we want to be. And that's the path fisheries management has to take on a global level. So today is a watershed moment. The oceans are endangered, but there is still a chance. A chance for fish stocks to recover to the extent that they yield enough for everybody. A chance for ecosystems to flourish again. A chance for the wealth of the oceans to grow again instead of dwindling away. If only humankind would finally begin catching only the fish we really want to eat. <laughs> <laughs>